Okay guys, so in this video, let's set up our project for RBAC. So currently I'm on the desktop. So let me create a new directory here. So make the RBAC uh, tutorial, something like this or whatever you like. And now let me see into that directory. And now let me create a new NPM project inside this directory by doing NPM init hyphen Y. So NPM init hyphen Y to keep all the defaults. And now if we ls here, we see a package.json file has been created. And now let me install a couple of dependencies that are required by this project. And as of now, I'm not installing all the dependencies. I'm just installing the setup dependencies that are required. So those would be npm install or simply i. Or let me clear out the console first. So npm i express ejs dot env for environment variables ejs for the templating engine and ex express is for the express framework that we are going to use then we are going to use morgan and not morgan but morgan like this and it's a and it's a very simple logger that you see logs inside the console that on which route the request is coming so that's why we are using morgan here and then we'll be using mongoose because that's what we are going to use as an orm to connect to our mongodb and then finally the http errors and this is used to handle the HTTP errors that you get inside your application. So this is only a subset of the dependencies that we require in this project. So now let me press enter and it will take a couple of seconds to install the dependencies. So now the dependencies have been installed. So let me clear out the console first. And now let me create an entry point to our application. That is the index file of our application and I'll call that app.js. So let me create that file that is touch app.js and now if we ls here, we have the app.js file, the node modules folder, the package log.json file and the package.json file. And now what I'll do, I'll create a couple of folders here. So make the views like this. And then I like to create a, a public folder for our application. And then I would also like to create another folder that is called models that will keep the mongoose models. And don't worry about these folders that if you don't know that why I'm naming these folders like this. So I'll be covering that also. So don't worry about this. And this views folder would basically keep our EJS views. That is the EJS templates. So now let me press enter. So now if we ls here, we have these files and these folders inside our application. So now what you need to do now you need to open this folder that is RBAC tutorial in your favorite text editor. I'm using VS code so I can simply do code dot to open my VS code here. And here we are inside VS code if you can see it. So these are the folders and these are the files that we have created. So now let's go inside the package.json file and we see that we have these dependencies installed. And now inside the scripts let me create some scripts here. We do not require the test script. We simply require a start script and that would be node app.js. And then we need to install one more package that is a dev dependency that would be used inside our application. And that is called node mod, which I forgot to install. So now let me install that also. So npm i dash dash save dev because it's a dev dependency and the dependency is node mod. And basically this dependency that is node mod, it auto restarts the application as soon as it sees changes inside the files. So now let me, uh, so now let me close this package.json file again. And now let me open it again. And now we see that we have this dev dependency here that is node mod. And now let me create a start script again because the file was, wasn't saved. And this should be node app.js like this. And then we create another script here that is the dev start and it should be node mod app.js like this so now let me save this file and now basically this dependency that is node mod it auto restarts the application by default only when it sees changes inside the .js files but we need to restart the application when it sees changes inside other files also like the css or the ejs templates so for that what we need to do we need to create a new file inside the root folder that is called node mon.json file so let's create that file that is touch node mon.json simply like this and we have this file that is nodemon.json and inside this file here we'll write something and that is the files on which we want to restart our application automatically and here we need to only provide one key value pair that is ext 
and you do not need to learn about this thing here because it's very simple you can go on the nodemon website and you can see that what it is you simply need to provide in the extension on which you want to restart your application so we want to restart our application on the .js files .css files and the .ejs templates that we are going to use inside this application and now we simply need to save this file here that is nodemon.json and nodemon will automatically take care of this file that is nodemon.json when it sees inside the root directory of our application so now let's go to our app.js file and here we'll start requiring the packages that we have just installed so firstly we need to require express so const express equal to require express then we have create http errors from http errors so const create http errors equal to require http errors like this then we have one more that is morgan and it's a logger here so require morgan and then we require the mongoose package so mongoose equal to require mongoose and then what we have installed we have installed this dependency that is dot env so for dot env what we can do we can simply require the dot env package that is dot env and we can simply call config on this like this so now mostly we have used all the dependencies here that is express and these these five dependencies and i don't think we have any other dependency so now that's all about it and now let's initialize our app so const app equal to express and now we need to listen on some port so let's define our port inside the root folder that is inside the dot env file but we do not have the dot env file here so let's create one here so touch dot env and we have this file here that is dot env file and here i'll define the port on which our application runs so port would be 3000 or whatever port you want and now what i want to do i want to normalize the port so const port equal to process dot env dot port or if the port is not defined in the dot env file then we want to run it on the default port that is 3000 and now what we can do we can simply call app dot listen and here we need to provide in the port and then we have a callback here and here we can simply make a log statement that is console.log that is our server is running on some port so let's make this rocket here that is on port and we can get the port from the port variable here and we can do it like this and we can pass in port here and we need to use template string since we are using single quotes but we need to use backticks here to use a template string so now let's save this application and now let me only create a single route here that is app dot get this is the first route inside our application and here we have a callback here that takes in request response and next and then we'll have something and we can simply response dot send working something like this now let's save this application and now what i'll do i'll simply start my application by doing npm run dev but we still need to add the error handler here and that's what we are going to do in a moment but let me first start the application and let's see if everything is working fine so we see that our server is on port 3000 so let's go to chrome here so let's go to localhost port 3000 and we see that it is working if you can see that it is working so now let's go back to our application and now let's write the error handlers here so writing error handler is very easy firstly we handle the 404 route that is if the route is not defined by our application then what do we do so we can do it like this that is app not dot get but app dot use that is for all the routes that are coming here which are not handled by our application and here we have the request response and next like this and here we simply need to call next and here we need to pass in the error that is what error it is and for that error messages we have imported this dependency that is create http errors so we'll use that so create http why is it not auto completing 
errors and here we can simply say not found like this and instead of putting in an s here let me remove the s here from here and even the s from here it should be only create http error because we are only creating a single error or a single error here like this so now let me save this so this is the 404 handler and now let me create the actual error handler and this should be app dot use and here this would take an error as the first parameter and then we have the request response and next like this and then what do we want to do we want to set the error status to be status coming from this block here that is from the error that is thrown by our application or we want to use the default error that is the 500 error so we can simply do it like this that is error dot status equal to error dot status if there is any status inside our error code or inside our error or otherwise the error code would be 500 and then we can simply say response dot status would be this uh, error dot status like this and this should be error dot status like this and we simply want to res dot send and here for now let me simply send the error back because we haven't create any views to handle the errors here so let me simply send back the error itself so this is how we handle errors so now let me save this application and now let me go back and let me go to any other route that isn't inside our application that is a 404 route so let me provide this route here and let's go there and we see that we are getting this message back here that is coming from the error handler that is message not found and the status code is 404 and even if we right click here and we inspect it we'll be seeing uh, inside the networks here let me reload the page and we see that we are getting the status code here as 404 that is status code 404 and that is coming from this thing here that is response.status so this is the proper way of handling errors inside your express applications so now let me close this and let me go back and now let me do something here at the top and now let's use these two packages also that is morgan and mongoose because we do not want to create separate videos for these two that is how to connect to mongodb so we'll be doing that in this video itself so app dot use and here we'll be passing in morgan and the type would be dev that is we want to see a log statement inside our console that is on which route we are hitting so now let me save this and the use basic use of usage of this package is this that uh, let me go to one route and you'll see so as you saw that before using this package we are not getting any routes here that is which uh, route the client is hitting on our server so let's go back here and let's again make a call to this route here that is that doesn't exist and if we go back here we see that now we are getting these log statements here that are very small that is we make a get request to this route and it doesn't exist so this is done by this morgan package here and now if we go to our home route that is root route we see that we again get back this thing here that is get and 304 and 304 basically means that the page hasn't been changed so it is sending back 304 so this is about this so now let's use this mongoose package here and basically for mongodb i am running mongodb locally on my system and if you don't know that how to install mongodb locally on your system then you can watch the video I will link both the videos that is how to install MongoDB locally on Windows or on Mac in the description below and you will be seeing the cards here at the top also and if you want to use MongoDB in the cloud that is MongoDB Atlas then for that also I will be linking in the description below that is how to use MongoDB in the cloud because I have already made a video about that but for this tutorial series I am simply using MongoDB locally on my system so let's go to our terminal once again and uh, let me clear out here and to see if mongodb is locally running we can simply say mongo and we see we are connected to our mongo shell here so we see that mongodb is running locally on our system so now let's go back and now to connect to mongodb we'll be using this mongoose package and let's go at the very bottom here where we have started listening for uh, connections on this port and before listening for connections I'll make a connection here to mongodb so mongoose.connect and here we need to pass in the URI that is on which URI our mongodb is hosted so for that we can create a URI inside the .env file 
So let me create a URI here. That is Mongo URI would be something and that something should be MongoDB colon forward slash forward slash localhost port 27017 because by default MongoDB runs on this port itself. And then we need all we also need the database name. So let's create our database name here. And this should be RBAC tutorial. Something like this or whatever you want to have. So now let me save this env file here and let's go back to app.js app file. And here we need to pass in the URI. The first parameter is the URI and we can get the uh, URI from the environment. So process dot env dot what it is called let me copy it mongo uri and we can paste in the mongo uri and then we need to pass in a couple of options here so we can pass in a couple of options here and that is the db name the db name we can again get that from the file so process dot env dot db name i suppose if i can verify it yes it's db name let me copy and let me paste because it's the same thing so now let's pass some more options here because if you don't pass the pass those options then you'll be getting deprecation warnings inside the console so let me pass them from before and basically these uh, options you need to pass as is it is no use of understanding them so use new url parser to be true use unified topology to be true use create index to be true and then use find and modify to be false like this and basically these are suggested by the mongoose website itself so you can go there and you can watch that what each of this does but it is no point learning what each of this does you can simply pass these options as is i have explained it here and now since it's a promise so we can use then and catch so then we have a call back here so here what we can do, uh, we can say, we can simply say console.log that database connected and for database we can use the floppy emoji here that is uh, connected or else we have a catch block also that is the error and here we can simply console.log error.message like this so now let me put the semicolon at the very end let me save this application and we see that our server started on port 3000 and our mongodb is connected so as we see here that that is we are trying to make a connection to mongodb using mongoose before app.lesson but in our console we are getting this later on because it's a promise so it will take some time to connect so what you can do you can make you can you can take this uh, block of code that is app.listen and you can put it inside here that is inside the den, then block here because there is no point of listening for connections on any of your ports when the mongodb has not been connected because you won't be able to serve the client with the data that is required by him so it is always better to listen for connections on your port only when mongodb has been connected so now let's save this application and now we see firstly we connect to the database and then we start the server on whatever port you want so now let's save this file and we see that everything is working okay guys so that's pretty much about this video we have basically made the skeleton of our application and in the next video we'll be creating our views inside the views folder and we'll also be creating the routes here inside the routes folder and i've not created the routes folder as of now so that's what i'm going to do in the next video to set up all the routes so that's what we are going to do in the next video that is creating the routes and creating the views for those routes so see you in the next one